us, we are going to get the freedom. The militaries, they have the power. If the leader is not ready, the presidents, we are seeing them, they are always bringing us back, taking Africa back. If the soldiers are ready for Africa to be liberated, we will be liberated. If you check Mali, the soldier took over. Burkina soldier took over. Jinnet soldier took over. Niger soldier is taking over. So all these countries that are liberating themselves today, their soldiers wake up. And I'm even begging to Gambian soldiers should also wake up. Senegal soldiers, Ghanaian soldiers, if the Akufadu is not ready to walk, kick him out. Soldiers of Ghana, kick him out. This general army, the army general of Ghana, kick Akufadu out if he is not ready to liberate Ghana. Ghana have a resources that can benefit Ghana. America, how many American businesses do we have in Ghana? How many American companies, American businesses do we have in Ghana? If Ghana, America is ready to put sanctions on Ghana, can Ghana, can, Ghana also can put sanctions on American businesses? So if you, the America, uh, Ghanaian soldiers, are seeing that Akufado is not ready to comply as Africa, take him out, as Mali did. Nigeria, the same thing. You have Bola Tinubu, who is an old man who is not even... I don't, sometimes I get, I wonder why. Is this a cost on Africa to always vote for all peoples who cannot even speak properly? Is this a cost on us? Do you know when someone is old, his brain look like a child? We didn't, we don't know this. If you came to Europe, when you have 60 years, you can never be a leader in Europe. They will pack you aside. Yeah, when you have 60 years, and Bola Tinibu is older than 60 years. Bola Tinibu is now going to 80. 80 years, if he didn't even have 80 years. How can Bola Tinibu rule that Nigeria? How do you expect Bola Tinibu is not even active? Someone who cannot even walk properly. Cannot speak properly. His brain is now not even thinking like a, uh, like a man. His brain is thinking like a child. He has a child brain right now. How do you expect? When I watch Bola Tinibu, sometimes I pity Nigeria. I say, no, no, no. Is this, it? is this true that this man is the president? Sometimes I, I, I drag with my brain that no, this man is not the president of Nigeria. Maybe it's just a news. It's just a fake news. But I don't believe this man is still the president of Nigeria. When you remove Buhari, who is old, who cannot even do nothing for himself, you go and put a man who is more older than Mohammed Buhari. And that made me pity. Do you think Bolatini will make Nigeria to be free? It's not possible. Nigerian militaries, plan. Plan. Do something. You are the peoples who we are waiting for. Come on. You are the people who we are... Nigeria have been suffering for so long in the hand of West. They have been pressing the neck of Nigeria. For Nigeria never to have a fresh air to breathe. It's a big pity. If the leader, you, come on, this leader is not a leader. I would not even say if the leader is not ready to comply because Bolatinibu can never comply. Nigeria didn't vote for Tinibu. I know my brother. I know. But I'm speaking to Nigerian soldiers. How many Nigerian soldiers are dying in the hand of terrorists, in the hand of kidnappers? The kidnappers and the terrorists, they have more weapons than Nigerian soldiers. They have more dangerous weapons than Nigerian soldiers. Trust me. How many Nigerian soldiers are dying in that bush? Sometimes I was watching so many videos about Nigerian soldiers in conflict with a terrorist group. A terrorist group was killing more Nigerian soldiers. So Nigerian soldiers, you are losing your soul for no reason and you can never win against those terrorist groups. Because those terrorist groups have been sponsored by the West with the most dangerous weapons that you people never seen in your life. You can never fight against the terrorist group, you are just killing yourself. Stop fighting against the terrorists. Fight against the leader that is there, bring him down. Let military man rule Nigeria. A young man, a young military general to rule Nigeria right now and let's take Nigeria to next level like Mali, like Burkina, like South Africa, like uh, 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 Malawi, like uh, Niger. We need military generals to become the leader right now in Africa. Since these old cargoes are not ready to comply with the African citizens. The militaries, we understand the language of militaries. And they understand the language of freedom. 
A military leader is never a coward and is never afraid to fight for his people when a military become a leader. When a military man become a leader, a military general, is never afraid to fight for his people. They, are, they have been trained to kill. They have been trained to fight. So they are not afraid of West. They tell the West the truth. That's why the Gambian former president, when they go out, they go and put a woman as a Gambian president. A woman. How can you vote for a woman in Gambia as a president and remove a military man as a president? When Gambia remove a military man as a president and put a woman as a president, and they want Gambia to go forward. Gambians are complaining. We are tired, we are tired. Who, who, who make you tired? You make yourself tired because you remove a man from leadership and put a woman there, a coward, as a leader of Gambia. And you expect Gambia to go forward. For what reason? When a man who is speaking, you even think like he's a woman. You go and put him as a leader. He is now working with the West to sell all Gambia resources and to even sell you the Gambians. How many Gambians have been deported? Still, they are deporting you, the Gambians. You can't even do nothing about that. You vote for him. You, the Gambians, wanted your life to be like that. You wanted your life to be like that when you remove a military as a leader. You remove him, kick him out, because the West was telling you, your president is a dictator, your president is a terrorist, your president is a killer. And when the West was paying some fake journalists, some protesters journalists in, in, in Gambia, all those journalists who were sitting in America making radio stations telling Gambians that the president raped me, the president do this, protesters journalists. The West was paying them. America was paying them. Those journalists to, to destroy the name of the Gambian president. Because they know he is not ready to comply with them. He is not ready to be a slave. He is not ready to make Gambia a slave country. He is not ready to accept any terrorist group in Gambia. Now they have to pay some Gambian journalists who, who run away to go and sit in America. America was giving those journalists a visa free to go to America. When they run and go to America, America was paying them to confuse Gambians. So all Gambians started to hate the president, saying that our president is not good. He's a killer. We don't want you. We don't want you. Now you take him out. You take a military out. The only one you can bring is a woman to become a president in the Gambia. And you expect Gambia to grow. Where? Where will Gambia go? When a woman is ruling Gambia, where will Gambia go? As they put that woman to rule Gambia, the woman have given Gambia to Lebanese, to Europeans. He was selling land, Gambian land. He, is a la he was a land seller. They make Gambians make a land seller as a president. He was selling Gambian lands, better land. The most important lands in the Gambia, he was selling it to Lebanese people. He was selling it to Europeans, the British. He was selling the better land of Gambia to them. He is selling even Gambians right now. A land seller, you make him a president. Now he don't only sell land, but he sell human beings. Gambian president is a human trafficker. I'm the one who said it. If the president don't like it, let him do whatever he want to do. I don't care. But the fact is, that man cannot rule that country. Because we don't need coward to become a leader in Gambia. We don't need those who want to remain in slavery to become a president, even in Africa. We don't need it. And if Gambians now are complaining, sometimes I sit and watch. Why are Gambians complaining? When they vote for this man, when they put this man in power, I will not even call him a man, when they put this woman in power, a coward who is afraid. When they put him in power, they told him that you are going to be there for three years. Then after that three years, you are going to come down and we are going to, Gambians are going to vote to choose a leader. To choose one political party. To rule them. This man say okay and this man sign all the documents that three years he have to come down and Gambians have to go and vote which political party they want. After three years, they tell this man to come down. This man says, he is not coming down. He is going to complete the five years. And after that, they can do election. If anybody win, can become the leader. Before that two years will complete, to come to five years, this man have already formed his own political party. Started bribing people around. Started buying cars. Do you know that the Gambian president was using almost 
how many billion? I think it was like six billion, six billion US dollar. Six billion dollars, Abi. Six billion dollars just to buy cars for ministers. When Gambians are suffering there in the Gambia, when he is still deporting Gambians from Europe and take them to Gambia, this man took six billion to buy only cars for ministers, to bribe ministers, to bribe honorables in the Gambia. To, buy, to bribe the parliament members. That's why a lot of the Gambian parliament members are keeping quiet on their old asses in that office. They couldn't speak for Gambia because you, you are eating the money from the president. You are collecting bribe from president. How can you speak for the Gambians? Not like the Gambian parliament workers, they didn't know what Gambians want. They know what Gambians want. They know how to work for Gambians. But because they were becoming a collector of bribe from the president, and they are afraid to speak the truth. They are never going to say something that the president will not want to hear. They always say things that the president wants to hear. Last time when I watched a woman who was a, an, an parliament member in Gambia, who was complaining that they increased her own salary. He's a parliament member. He was very truthful. She was very truthful. I appreciate her. May God bless her. I don't know the woman's name, but he's a parliament. she is a parliament member. She was complaining that, why do the president have to increase my salary to one million? If I have people in my society who are suffering, I don't need the money. He, this is what she was saying. She said, I don't need the president to increase my salary to one, one million. One million. When my society is suffering, I don't need it. Don't pay me for that money. He was, she was complaining so bitterly. She said she is not going to be in the parliament anymore because she don't need that money. Look how truthful she was. She was so truthful. I watch the video of that woman, I feel like to cry. I feel like to cry when there are men, men with their bungalows sitting there. They couldn't speak like that. A woman become a man to feel his power, her own peoples. To feel the sovereign of Gambia says, the president, you don't have to pay me one million dollars because it's too much when my society, the society I came from, they are suffering. I don't need the money. The poor masses need the money. They pay taxes. They need the money, not me. A woman, there are many parliament members who are men. They are sitting there on their asses. They don't appreciate the woman speaking out that word. The woman was speaking so many secrets that are in the parliament. Says they are not necessary. How can you pay ministers one million, one million, when the society they come from, those people are suffering? When the people who are paying taxes, they are suffering. How can you use six million, six billion to buy, to buy just only car for the honorable members in the parliament? Why? When the people who are paying those taxes are suffering. The woman was complaining. And men are in the parliament, they can never speak for Gambia like that. What are the use of those, you, you the Gambians, men in the parliament? You were all feeling the same as I was watching the video. You were all keeping your head like this. You don't even want the camera to show your face because you know that you are a stupid and coward parliament member for Gambians. You don't want to show your face because you feel the same that where you should stand, a woman wake up and stand in that place as a man. All you, the Gambian parliament workers, the only thing you know how to do is to just squandalize our money and at the end of the day when they give you that one million salary, you go to the hotel and start sleeping with young girls in the Gambia. The Gambian parliament workers, they are men, the only thing they know how to do is to collect money and share our money among each other and go and sleep with girls on the, on the hotel. They know how to rent a hotel. The only thing that Gambian parliament workers know how to do is to go and rent a hotel. The president is aware that his parliament workers are take, renting hotel for girls. The president is aware. You think the president is not aware? The Gambian president is aware. The Gambian president is aware that my MPs, when I share money with them, they go to the hotel and take on the eight children and go and disvagin them on the hotel. The Gambian president is aware. That's why he's not speaking. The Gambian president, no? Because the advisor to the Gambian president have been sleeping with people wives until his bungalow come out. That was Dusanu, whose sex audio come out. Dusanu, the advisor to the president, the, the, the advisor to the Gambian president, who should advise the president to do good, is now sleeping with people wives. 
How do you expect the person who should advise me is not advise sleeping with people who are wives? What will you think I will do? If that is the person who is sleeping with people wives should be the one to advise me. Then how do you think uh, what, what will I what will he advise me to do? Hey, Mr. President, sleep with women, so don't worry. If I'm the president of Gambia and my advisor is sleeping with people's wives around, then why how do you think that person that person that advisor will advise me? He will not just advise me, Mr. President, let's share this money. Forget about the country citizens. Let's share this money. We can go to some hotel. I have rented some hotel. We can go there. And do you think if that man was doing that for me, and later that man's sex audio come out, do you think I will sack him? I will be afraid to sack the advisor because if I sack him, he may expose me whatever he was doing for me. The woman he was bringing for me, he may expose me, so I will not sack him. So that's why all the ministers that their bungalows videos came out in Gambia, all the ministers, the president refused to sack them. We know it, Mr. President. Don't worry. You know, you can silence some Gambians, but people like Pandemica, you can never silence us. No matter what you do, the only thing you could do when I came to Gambia, lock me up. And I don't care about that. That is something that I, I'm not worried about that, to be locked up by you. Because I know that's the only thing the West will ask you to do. They will tell you that. That young boy is Pandemica, he's fighting for Africa and we don't want, he's from your country. If you don't want us to ban you from our country, arrest him when, it came to, when he came to the country. So arrest me. I know it will happen one day. The West will allow you to arrest me because I'm fighting for Africa. So they will threaten you with a visa that you will never come to Europe if you don't arrest me. So you will arrest me one day because you need money from them. So arrest me and go and collect the money and eat it. But remember this, Dad. Whatever I said about you, I'm never regretting to say it about you, Mr. President, Gambian President. Remember it that locking me up can never retreat me from my freedom fighting. Remember this, that the only thing that could stop me is when you slaughter me, Gambian President. Remember that. And remember this, that when you lock me up, that year will be the end of your leadership. I'm not joking, and I'm not promoting myself. I'm not God. And I'm not angel, I know. I'm just a human being like every other human being out there. But Mr. President, remember it. If you lock me up any year, that year will be the end of your leadership. I'm not telling you because I'm, I don't want you to arrest me. If you want to arrest me, I will come to Gambia always. So if I come there again, arrest me. No problem. I'm not worried. But the truth is you are not capable to rule that country. And even in front of you, I will repeat the same thing. That Mr. President, you are not capable to rule this country. You don't have the capability. You don't have the you don't you, you don't have the mind to take the responsibility of that country. You are just afraid and you are just a man who is a coward, never ready to speak out the truth because you are too greedy. And I can say all these things in front of you. If you will kill me, kill me for saying the truth. No problem. But I can repeat whatever I say on media about you, I can repeat it in front of you. If I will be slaughtered by you, let me be slaughtered. I am wondering why I have been speaking with so many Gambian military men. What are they waiting for? Why they don't bring you down for a very long time? And I'm not afraid to say this. If I would be arrested because of this, let me be arrested. But I would want what happened in Mali, what happened in Burkina, what happened in Niger to happen in Gambia. Let the militaries take over. We were having a military leader, Yaya Jambe, who was very good, a great leader. We want the same leader like Laya Jambe, not a coward, not a woman like this. Gambians will complain, 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 complain. Gambians are afraid to fight for themselves. Gambians are afraid to speak for themselves. Gambians are afraid to go to prison. Gambians are afraid to die. That's why they are afraid to speak for themselves. They are afraid to even fight for their own rights. They are all right. They all know it's their right to complain. They will not even complain because they are afraid not to go to prison. Gambians will go and vote for you again because they all want one gallon of oil. After when the election is at the corner, the president will start telling you stories, how he climbed up a three-story building, how he climbed up a helicopter, how he was moving in Europe, how he was changing boats, how many jobs do we have in Europe stories. He just tell Gambian stories and they vote for him. To, to brainwash Gambians is very cheap. The president of Gambia brainwashed Gambians with story. I climb up a tree 500 meter. 
I will put internet in your garden. You will sit in your house and took your phone and water your garden while sitting in your house. Why? The president, I never see a president going on in a campaign, the Gambian president, and saying that, look, we want to make this project or we want to do this. No. The only thing he can say to Gambians is, hey, somebody was talking about me. Leave him. He's a political leader. He was talking about me. He know how to reply political party leaders, but he don't know how to speak to Gambians, to solve Gambians' problem. When Gambia was having a problem with Senegal soldiers coming into Gambia and firing arm in Gambia, Gambians complain. The president never come out and address it. Gambians were dying. Thieves, armed robbers were in Gambia. Gambians were complaining. The president never came out to address it. Gambians were deported. The president never came out to address it. Gambia. All Gambia is complaining. Wow, 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 we don't want deportation. The president have to stop this. They do demonstration in Germany for a million times. They go and do demonstration in Gambia. Nothing came out. The president is still sitting down, keeping quiet. He never came out once to address the issue. When he came out, do you know what he do? He, I saw his video last time when he was speaking, responding to some political party. He was in some place responding to some political party. Which kind of leader is that? You know, Mr. President, sometimes, huh, if I watch you, Mr. President, Gambian President I'm talking to, if I watch you sometimes, I just see you as a small child who is ready to play with the minds of full-grown men. Because that's what you are doing right now. When you are destroying Gambians, you are killing Gambians each and every day. You still came out to come and tell Gambians a story, how you climb a 500 meter tree. How you were working in Europe. You said, I sleep 30, 30 minutes. Yeah. I changed balls in Europe 90 times, nine times, nine times a day, you change balls, a trend, you will change trend nine times, I think your job is to go and change, keep on changing trend and when the month finish they pay you, why, the only thing he could tell Gambians, to convince Gambians with story, tell me, when do you see Gambian president making a speech, about the problem of Gambia. How many problems do we have in Gambia? We have price back of rice high. We have things difficult in Gambia. The Gambian president never came out to address those issues. If you see a Gambian president coming out to speak, he want to reply somebody. Somebody made a speech about him. An ordinary citizen will make a speech about him and he will come out to reply that person. Sometimes I, I, I get angry. If I say something now, they say, no, you insult the president. But the Gambian president is never telling the truth. I'm not seeing you, Mr. President, as a truth teller. You never tell us truth. We put you there as a president. But you are the enemy of Gambia. You hate us and you expect us to love you. Who the hell are you, Mr. President? Who the hell are you when you will hate us, destroying our features, and you expect us to love you? We hate you, Mr. President. We hate you. There's no doubt about that. Never think like uh, I, Pandemica, will love you. No, maybe there are some foolish Gambians who will love you for destroying them. But not me and my peoples. Me and my peoples will never love you and we will never love you. And you are never our president. Come on, for me, there is no president in Gambia. I am my own president in Gambia. I can say it anywhere. And I can go to Gambia and still live to tell the story that's my country. The same way the Gambian president has right in Gambia to have citizenship, the same citizenship I have. And I have the right to complain whatever is not going well in that country. It's not like you are a president, you are going to make me feel afraid to say my mind or to say the truth out. Come on, as far as you are a president, you give us right to complain to you whatever you are not doing good. You give us that right since you are sick democracy. So we will complain to you, and if we complain and you are not complying, Mr. President, we put you there, we pay taxes. Those taxes pay your salary every month, $150,000, and you took money from us to buy food. We buy for your food, we buy for your water, we pay your children's school fees in America. We, our money you use to buy car for your children in America, Ferrari. So, Mr. President, we are not going to see you as a giant or as a lion. No, 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 no. You are just like a slave to us. We put you there to work for us. And if you are not ready to comply, we are going to speak to you like our own worker. We are never going to feel afraid. Maybe some Gambians will feel afraid to tell you the truth. But let me tell you, we, we don't see president in Gambia. And we don't have a president in Gambia. Gambia don't have a president. 
Believe it or not, every military PIU officers, para soldier, immigration officers in Gambia realizes from today you don't have a president. What are you waiting for? And uh, I, I want to say this I'm not fighting against no military in, uh, in Gambia, but I want to say this and I want, I would want the message to reach to Gambians, Gambians military services. That I, Pandemica, I'm not fighting against my citizens, I'm not fighting against military, but I'm fighting against one man. Who is destroying that country? And I will want the military services, soldiers, paras, PI officers, immigration officers, not to include themselves. Don't include yourself. If you can't support me on the liberation to free Gambia, don't go against me. I beg you in the name of God. Please, I am begging the military services, the police, the PI officers, the immigration officers. Don't include yourself. I am fighting against a man who is destroying even you, the militaries, the servicemen in the Gambia, because your salary is poor. Did the president pay you good salary in Gambia? No. You are all crying out because your salaries are poor. And we, we want to fight for that. Do you think we are happy to see you, the militaries, working for us, guiding us each and every day and night? You don't sleep because you are guiding and protecting us and you are not earning good salary. You think we are, not, we are happy about that? A good citizen of Gambia will never be happy to see Gambian servicemen working hard on the street day and night guiding the citizens and their property. But they are not earning good salary. Why? Because the president is greedy and doesn't want to give them what they deserve. Whatever the ministers, the MPs, the honorable members in the cabinet are collecting today is more than the military pay payments in, uh, in a month. And the military should be the one to, the servicemen that has <coughs> using their eyes not to sleep and using their eyes to guide and protect the citizens and their property should be the one to collect the highest salary because they give their life to the country. They can die by guiding the, that country. They can die any time. Terrorist group can come and shoot them, fire on them and kill them. They have a family also. So we are not happy seeing you, the militaries crying out that you don't even have good salary. The doctors in the hospital are always crying. They put three, three sick people on one bed. They have to put three patients or four patients in one bed because there is no bed in the hospital. Because there is no medicine in the hospital. There is no blood in the hospital. There is no water. The doctors are always complaining. The president never talk about that. The militaries, the teachers, everybody is complaining about salary. Because salary is poor, salary is poor. And now Gambians, even Gambian teachers are leaving school to come to Libya to cross and came to Iran. Gambian doctors are coming to come to Libya. Why are they leaving that job in the Gambia to run away? Because they are not getting good salary. And those people are the ones you are taking back without no job again. So this is why I say militaries, the servicemen in the Gambia, police, PIU officers, paras, uh, soldiers, immigration officers, if you can't join me, to liberate Gambia, please don't let the president to let you go against me. I never pray to fight against my fellow citizens. I am fighting against only one man, and that is the president of Gambia. I don't like him today, I don't like him tomorrow, and I will never like him as far as he is destroying that country like this. And he is never my president. I announced it so long time, even before I will go to Gambia last time. I announced it that. The president is ruling one side of Gambia, I'm no, and I'm the president of one side of the Gambia. We say it. And no matter how long, we will say it. And I'm not afraid to say it, and I can say it anywhere. Come on, I rule my own side. I rule URR in Gambia, not the president. Your commandment will not work there anymore. I rule that side. If you want to do anything, do it. I don't care. But I will promise the military of this. Please. Stay away from my part. If any military service men, you, you will not support me of what I am doing. You will not join me. Stay away. You are the people who we, we expect to see you on this journey to join us to liberate every African country like Mali did, like Burkina Faso did. Without military, we can't do it. We need you people on board because you people are the ones standing uh, behind the president, guiding the president with big guns. When we want to speak for our own minds, for ourselves, defend ourselves, you kill us for the president. For one man, you are killing your fellow brothers. And we are the one complaining that the military salaries will be added. 
the police, the PIU officers, the 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 the, the, uh, the immigration officers, the paras, their salary is too poor. We are the one complaining this will be increased because we pay taxes to pay those peoples. Now, if the money is not going to those peoples who are guiding us, why is the president so greedy eating the money alone when we are paying taxes to pay the servicemen who are guiding us each and every day and night? Why is the president greedy to taking that money and sharing it with the parliament members? And the only thing they know how to do with that money is to go and collect school guards from the road and take them to the hotel and sleep with them. The Gambian parliament members. They will not even feel as same of this. They are deporting Gambians from Germany because German gave Gambian government a money. That was the money that they took six billion to go and buy a car for the parliament members. Each and every one new car. A car that worth three million. Three million Gambian dollars in one car. They bought many cars and sell it among each other. When, when teachers are complaining, doctors are complaining, no hospital bed, no blood in the hospital, no medicine in the hospital, no car. The, 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 the fire service is complaining, no car. They can't even go somewhere to go and off fire when fire is somewhere. And that is the problem. You use three, uh, uh, six billion or Gambian dollars to go and buy a car for the honorables. When we have all this Wolipa problem in the Gambia, that you could use six billion to solve all the problem. Six billion, not million, but six billion. You can use it to solve all those problems. But you go and use the money, give it so that the, 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 the MPs will hide your secret. So that the parliament members who you are working with, they will hide your secret, Mr. President. That's your plan. Come on. We are done with that rubbish right now and we are not going to take it no more so thank you guys for being with me here and i will close my life here may god bless you all and may god save us all from african pro 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 leaders and may god uh, bless africa and may god see each and everyone who is watching me right now may god bless us all and may god save us from our enemies whatever your enemies plan agents you shall never prosper and whatever we are finding in our life we shall get it in an easy way May God save us from our enemies. May God save us from our enemies. May God give us good life, good health, and a long life. May God save us from our enemies, I always say. May God never make us have no enemy, but may God never make our enemies to get over us. May God make our enemies always to see us higher and higher. Whatever your enemies pray for and whatever your enemies are praying against you shall go back to sender. You shall be free in your life. You shall never be attacked by your enemies. And even when you are attacked by your enemies, your enemies shall never succeed on you. You shall always be the toughest man among your enemies. You shall be always be the toughest man among people who hate you, who always pray for you to be destroyed. The destroyment shall go back to them. God shall always protect you and your family wherever you are. The evil hand will never touch you, neither your family. May God bless us all. Thank you guys for being with me here. May God give us all good health and long life and prosperity in our lives. Thank you guys.